Hello everyone, this is Jiktar Shergal. Today I'm going to uh, start the chapter 3 for the Rebo Level 1 exam for a registered insurance broker in Ontario. So let's start. So insurance contracts and the role of government in insurance. So we will discuss this thing, insurance contracts and the role of government in insurance. So first of all, I want to tell everybody that I do see the uh, stats on my YouTube channel. Over 93% people watch my channel and videos but do not subscribe. So that's not helping me much. So please, if you watch it, just uh, click the subscribe button so that you get some more videos from me when I download it. Plus also helps the channel. So I really appreciate that. Plus, uh, if you have any referrals or leads uh, for auto home insurance or commercial business trucking insurance or any kind of uh, uh, travel insurance life and critical illness please give me a referral at 416-831-0215 i really appreciate that so let's start the chapter so in this chapter uh, we have to define the purpose of a fiduciary describe the role of government in determining solvency and insolvency of insurance and list and describe the purpose of multiple government supervisory departments and name the elements of legal contract and insurable insurance contract explain the difference between void and voidable contract and illustrate the purpose of binders and how they relate to insurance contract so fiduciary a insurance pro uh, protects financial assets thereby it's fidu it's in fiduciary in nature in simple terms a fiduciary is someone who handles other people's money so we have a fiduciary responsibility towards our clients and insurance company has same fiduciary responsibility so this uh, uh, that's it, the fiduciary responsibility came from the word fiduciary so it's very important i think uh, this kind of uh, question will come in the exam for sure because this is the main uh, uh, term which is has to be very careful and people should know what their fiduciary responsibilities are so as an insurance broker my responsibility fiduciary responsibility to my client is that when they pay the premium to make sure i put their insurance with the right insurance company and when time comes for claim they also get claim so that's what uh, fiduciary responsibility it is and uh, second thing is the government regulations so there's many regulations uh, like uh, solvency uh, that's mostly federal and provincial government uh, involved in that to make sure that all the insurance companies are solvent in resolving the client's claims they so that's why the insurance companies have to take enough premium so that they can cover their expenses for payrolls commissions issuing policies underwriting and paying claims and plus they have to make some uh, profit for the shareholders as well so if they cannot make profit or they cannot pay their bills then uh, they can close their doors or they can go bankrupt so that's why federal government makes sure that all the insurance companies have enough money uh, to handle the claims and 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 complete their responsibilities so for uh, provincial they also have to have fair practices like uh, create the insurance act and create statutory conditions and oversee terms and conditions of the policy Say the insurance insurer licensing is also a provincial matter. So all in Canada, uh, as insurance is a provincial matter. So uh, each province has their own conditions for licensing. So just like Ontario has a like a rebo like a registered insurance brokers of Ontario, and uh, so they issue the license for insurance brokers, and uh, so also brokerage licensing is also provincial uh, responsibility so federal supervision the 
the office of the superintendent of financial institutions it's called osfi of the office of the superintendent of financial institution its main role is to review and monitor all federally licensed insurers to determine their financial soundness so and second thing is there's the property and casualty insurance compensation corporation so despite strong monitoring process so insurance companies failure can occur in order to protect policy holders and claimants from such an event federal government regulators approve the top formation of property and casualty insurance compensation corporation it called p a c i c c in 1992 so so that's under the federal supervision so uh, o s f i and p a c i c c so what's under provincial uh, supervision the financial services regulatory authority of ontario it's called f s r a so financial services regulatory authority of ontario regulates insurers operating in ontario and enforces the provincial insurance act and what they do they do licensing of both life and general insurance agents monitoring insurer solvency so that insurance companies have enough liquid money to cover their expenses and claims and ensuring fair market practices and approving automobile insurance coverage and rates so they also approve the rates when insurance companies raise their insurance uh, auto insurance rates so they have to go through uh, this uh, agency to get the rates approved and uh, now we come to insurance contracts those are classic example of written contracts but oral contracts such as ordering a meal at drive through window or booking a taxi or ride sharing service are also legal contra contracts so mostly so you have a lease contract or real estate contract those are like you have to have papers uh, signed and everything but there's also well, like oral contracts as well just like in uber or drive through and but in in insurance there's also oral contract when you promise somebody to give insurance and but still have to go through all the documentations and payment uh, mostly we get a void check from uh, clients to pay the monthly payments in a, a, a regular companies like uh, we call good companies people with the good insurance record uh, but uh, high risk companies we take up front first and last month payment or 20% down or sometime full payment down so so there's some oral contracts and some are uh, contracts written in papers before but uh, oral contracts are sometimes also legally binding as long as there is offer and acceptance and a promise of a premium or premiums already paid so there's a uh, eight elements required for any insurance contract uh, first of all five elements of contracts in general there's agreement has to be agreement then consideration then legality of object and legal capacity of the insurer of the parties to the contract and genuine intention A agreement it's common practice to be written to avoid misunderstanding however an oral agreement is just as legally binding on the parties to the contract as a written agreement is as we just discussed before and uh, so has to be agreement of like if i give you the insurance code and you have to accept it and then in acceptance there's the consideration as in an insurance contract the cons consideration given is the payment of the policy premium or the promo pro promise to pay the premium at a later date and there should be a legality of con contract or object legality of object refers to whether the object of the contract has a legal basis 
and legal capacity of the parties to be contract. For a contract to be considered legally enforceable, the parties involved must have the legal capacity to enter into a contract. An individual is a legal person who can enter into a contract, sue or be sued. Business is registered under the company name, incorporation or limited company are also considered just as a, a persons in uh, legal terms so they can be sued as well but if there is no incorporation written at the end or company or incorporation uh, limited company then let's say if i own the abc insurance company and i uh, don't have any incorporation that means jaktar shirkal operating as abc insurance company uh, has to be written there then person who's owning that uh, uh, business has to be legally responsible unless there is an incorporation or limited company so that you have to make sure so when uh, you are in a real world writing insurance business but if somebody just give you the name uh, but didn't say any incorporation or limited company then you have to make sure that person who's own that business his name or her name has to be in front and that's say do, doing business as so that is a, without the incorporation or limited company is just a trade name trade name cannot be insured without the person who own that trade so so person who can get into the contract like legal legal legally incompetent persons persons who are mentally incapable they cannot be uh, get into the contract and get insurance persons who are under the influence people who are under the influence they cannot get contract but sometimes it's very hard for them to get away with it later on if they get enter into contract they say that oh i was drunk or i was under the influence of uh, alcohol something it's very hard to get away with it once you sign the contract and minors so minors in ontario they can uh, enter into a lease agreement so they can also get into a uh, contract other than that they have to be 18 years old to be in contract like in auto insurance so genuine intention so intention has to be clear to get the insurance contract you cannot get contract by fraud or by use of threat or force it's called duress or concealment like misrepresentation of pertinent facts or mistake or legal document signed in error or by mistake uh, three elements of insurance in addition to the five basic elements required of all and so enforceable contracts insurance contract must include the following three elements there has to be insurable interest utmost good faith and indemnity insurable uh, interest is like that you can uh, you cannot insure somebody else business so you have to have some kind of uh, insurable interest in uh, getting the getting into the contract of insurance like uh, you as a owner of business uh, sole proprietor you can get uh, get insurance you can get insurance on your car or your home plus mortgagee or the loan companies who give the loan for the cars or for the home they have also have insurable interest because they paid the money and something happens to the building or to the car they want to make sure that they got their money so so that's that's the insurable interest in life insurance also you cannot get insurance on anybody's life there has to be an insurable interest like you can be a, either spouse or parent or children or there's some kind of health relation has to be there to get insurance so you cannot get uh, uh, insurance without that and utmost good faith so insurance is the working on the basis of utmost good faith when you tell uh, like as a consumer uh, all the facts and uh, 
and we write it it's like in good faith like we give the insurance but if there is a later on there's a misrepresentation or fraud the insurance can be de denied our policy can be cancelled as of effective date and mostly companies return the premium and no claim paid so and then there is a indemnity the law restricts payments for claims under an insurance policy to the actual amount of financial loss suffered by the policyholder no more and no less so you once the claim happened you cannot get more than what was lost or you will not get less than what was lost so you will exactly get the claim and amount for your loss no less no more and then there's a void and voidable contracts void is the like sometime when we write the policy uh, like uh, then all the facts were not there or it is not uh, according to policy guidelines or company guidelines they can void the contract from inception and policy not issued uh, so void contract of insurance is one which is considered never to have existed voidable contract is a voidable contract of insurance is one that may be rendered void or unenforceable for one or more of the reasons discussed earlier like jimmy pell uh the how we did discussed before that uh, if uh, you misrepresent or you give fraudulent statement or the facts were not true even though the policy is issued but later on if those facts are found the policy can be uh, voided and the contract can be uh, uh, voided so that's called voidable contract then there's called binders and oral binders binder insurance is be we talking about insurance so insurance binder like when people buy home insurance or they buy car under lease or financing contract so those financing companies they need the confirmation of insurance so that's called insurance binder in technical technical term so insurance binder is a confirmation of insurance so sometime uh, we give the insurance binder once we write the insurance and send the application to the company and uh, they lawyer need that insurance binder right away so that uh, people can get their home uh, closing done on the same day because without the insurance binder sent to the lawyer and the home uh, deal is not done so nobody get paid until that insurance binder is sent to the lawyer but it's your responsibility to make sure do the right thing do all your due diligence and make sure the client fits with that insurance company where you're giving insurance because if you send the binder and later on a company refused to issue the policy there can be a big legal trouble and error admission insurance uh, takes effect or you can be sued brokerage can be sued so it's very important do not come under any pressure once you write a uh, home insurance so take your time and see where the client fits and which insurance company take it and how much premium the client agrees with it then do the insurance I deal with this situation situations a lot every day uh, people uh, call to get the insurance on same day or the lawyers some of my friends they want me to get the insurance as soon as possible right way uh, most cases we do it but sometimes it's not possible to do the insurance same day we have to get approvals from insurance companies either they have claims or they have more than one mortgage or they have more than two applicants on the policy or it's a rental property or it's a kind of uh, student rental or different kind of situations so that's uh, why it's very important to make a binder proper binder before uh, you send it uh, oral binders like uh, can be issued orally but as a general rule it should be confirmed immediately with the written binder so even auto insurance like if you send the application and a client is coming to sign to your office and a promise of a payment you can say that he has insurance but uh, generally 
papers have to be signed immediately after the client comes so if the intention is not there then that's not good but as long as somebody is coming to uh, get the insurance you can give oral insurance as well on the promise of coming to sign the papers and giving the payment in in my 22 years of uh, experience doing uh, uh, auto and home insurance i did only once that uh, oral binder but uh, mostly either people sign by email uh, electronic signatures or come to office to sign the papers and they go through it and they give the void check or the down payment or the full payment then we give the insurance so it's very important uh, to uh, before you give any oral binder it's very very rare but uh, some cases you can like in one case where i give the binder oral binder was that i send the application to the client and to sign and he already sent me the word check all he was going to pick up his papers from staples business depot where i fax those papers to sign and he got involved with the police and they caught him and they're looking for insurance and he said he's uh he's going to pick sign the paperwork and uh, police called me and they said does he have insurance i said yes he has insurance and they say if, if he hit somebody will will he be covered i said yes he will be covered so he were saved from getting a ticket and but plus he actually did sign the papers and send it to me within the next uh, half an hour so that was on trust basis but uh, it's very very rare to give oral binder so so this is the conclusion of the chapter and uh, so you can go through this chapter for all these uh, 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 I mentioned like all those terms fiduciary and financial services regulatory authority of Ontario office of the superintendent of financial institutions property and casualty insurance compensation corporation void contract or voidable contract so let's go through some of those uh, quiz questions uh, government regulation of insurance companies essential for uh, the answer actually i can just give it the protection of canadian insurance consumers and which of the following best describe a fiduciary someone who handles others money what is the main role of office of the superintendent of financial institution to review and monitor the financial soundness of all federally licensed insurers what is the name of the organization responsible for licensing of both life and general insurance agents in ontario the financial services regulatory authority of ontario fsra all contract must include five essential elements to be enforceable by law and they are agreement consideration legality of object legal capacity and genuine intention in a legally enforceable contract the element of agreement comprises both offer and acceptance which of the following is an example of an offer a completed application for insurance submitted to the insurer to the insurer so when we complete the application sign and uh, send it to the insurance company so and other one is which of the following statement is incorrect so an oral agreement is not legally binding on the parties to be to the contract so that's not that's not correct so oral agreement is as binding as the written agreement what is the legal purpose of consideration in any valid contract it is evidence the two parties to the contract intend to be bound by the contract so and ninth uh, is that maria was a bit short of funds on the date she purchased an automobile insurance policy she promised to pay the premium within 30 days which of the following statement is correct the policy is valid because maria has an intent to pay the premium so sometimes you miss the payment uh, of insurance so uh, company tries second time 
uh, within five to six business days or seven business days but the payment didn't go through it can go into cancellation mode but uh, you have the right to reinstate your auto insurance policy within 30 days if you have the money so it, it cannot happen again and again but some companies give you two option two choice two chances actually then after that then they say no more they will not even reinstate the policy even though you want to get the pre payment even sometimes clients say that they can pay the full premium but companies say no so it's very important to have the payments uh, on time and other one was like uh, number 10 like say Pradeep Singh owns Singh's Appliances Limited the named insured on the insurance policy must be shown as so here's saying that Singh's Appliances Limited Pradeep Singh owns Singh's Appliances Limited so if it was Pradeep Singh doing business at Singh's Appliances then we have to use the name Pradeep Singh doing business as Singh's Appliances but here said Singh's Appliances Limited so it's an independent uh, legally uh, legal body like Singh's Appliances Limited is a company so we have to say Singh's Appliances Limited on the insurance contract so this was the chapter number three I hope you got some clearance on the uh, terms which I described and all the conditions so go through line by line and if you have any question or comment you can uh, uh, comment on this video or call me at 416-831-0215 I really appreciate if you send me some leads for auto home or commercial insurance that's all I do on my business on referral basis I don't do much advertising so either my existing clients or center of influence people send me uh, the leads or tell me to uh, ensure somebody then or people call me after hearing from somebody that's how I work so but I'm trying to explain here all the chapters for people who want to get into business so that uh, they can get into this uh, wonderful business of insurance so thanks for watching i'll bring the another chapter chapter number four in the next video until then i'll say thank you very much for watching and have a blessed day thanks